Hello and welcome to this reflection from Strettonville Baptist Church. In the last few weeks we've seen how Jesus exercised his authority by teaching the disciples and the crowds with the authority that came directly from God. This week we see how Jesus works out his authority practically by works of power and miracles. He comes down from the mountain and he immediately begins to work healing those who are in need. So I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 8 verses 1 to 17. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go Show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralysed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed, and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west, and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, let it be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very moment. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her, and she got up and began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all who were ill. This was to to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. So we see that in the first um, few interactions that Matthew records in this chapter, we see Jesus offering healing to three different people. They all react to Jesus in different ways that we'll spend some time reflecting upon. So the first person that we're told about is the man with leprosy. These were people with a variety of skin diseases who were cast out of society. Many people saw leprosy as a kind of living death. They were viewed as contaminating and ceremonially unclean. They couldn't work, return home or have any involvement in religious activities. So they struggled with financial, social and spiritual challenges. Anyone who came into contact with them were also made ceremonially unclean. So people with leprosy were avoided by other people in the community. They were required to inform unaffected people that they were in the area by shouting out unclean unclean wherever they went so people could avoid passing near them they were not allowed to come within six feet of unaffected people or 150 feet if there was a wind blowing they were easily identified visually as well as there was they were required by law to wear torn clothing to demonstrate their disease Therefore, people with leprosy were medically isolated due to the possible contamination and were also financially, socially, culturally and religiously isolated due to the culture of the time. Despite this cultural view that people with leprosy were not to sully normal people with their uncleanness, when the man saw Jesus come down the mountainside, he was willing to risk punishment to approach Jesus. He knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. 
The man did not doubt Jesus' power or ability to cure him, but his own low self-esteem made him believe that Jesus may not want to heal him. From the time that this man had leprosy, he would have been scorned, despised, avoided, mocked and feared, and this would have crushed any sense of self-worth that he had. He might even have believed he was suffering because God had cast him out or cursed him for his sin. Yet, he clearly had not given up all hope, faith and trust in God as he approached Jesus, hoping God would look upon him with compassion. Life has many ways of stripping our self-esteem away from us. Sometimes it is other people who put us down, mock us, ignore us, or in some other way make us feel bad. Sometimes it is our own failures at certain tasks that make us believe we're useless. Sometimes it is our own high expectations, perfectionism, fear or other negative emotions that cause us to doubt our worth. There are many things that try to strip us of our worth and value, so much so that we often stop trying or we give up. How often do we allow our low self-esteem, our doubts, our fears, stop us from stepping forward? God looks at us and sees value. No matter what situations we're in, no matter what state, no matter what we've done or not done, what we've achieved or failed at, God sees us and he loves us. Do not allow your lack of self-word to stop you from approaching God. He is longing to unite with you, to love you, to put his arms around you. Take heart from the courage of the man with leprosy, who approached Jesus with boldness and humility. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And hear Jesus' words in response. I am willing. Whatever is troubling you, Jesus is willing. Willing to listen, willing to love, willing to work in your life. You just need to take that first courageous step and move towards God. See God's compassionate smile and allow it to inspire and strengthen you as you gather your strength to turn to him and ask for his help. So now we turn to the centurion soldier, another unlikely figure to approach Jesus. The man was a Gentile, and so someone that most Jewish people looked down upon. He was also a centurion, a commander of up to a hundred Roman soldiers. The centurions were feared as they were the enforcers of Roman rule in the various localities. As the centurion said to Jesus, centurions received their power directly from the Roman Empire. What the emperor said was what the centurions did. So centurions were hated and feared by the Jews, as they were both symbols and enforcers of Roman oppressor. So when the centurion approached Jesus, I wonder if the crowds and disciples feared that the centurion was there to cause trouble for them. And yet instead, the centurion comes to Jesus saying, Lord, my servant lies at home paralysed, suffering terribly. And Jesus responds to him, asking, shall I come and heal him? The centurion's reply is pretty amazing. Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. Once again, there is a recognition that compared to Jesus, he has little worth. I doubt that the centurion struggled with self-worth like the man with leprosy did. His position would require a fair amount of self-confidence and self-assurance. But even in his self-assurance, he was able to recognise that Jesus was more worthy, more deserving of honour than him. So the centurion gives Jesus his respect. And like the leprous man, the centurion also recognised Jesus' power and authority to heal illness and demand that the sickness leave his servant's body. The centurion used his own experience of authority and how it can be wielded to demonstrate his confidence 
that Jesus could command the sickness away and it would happen by his word. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. <clears throat> the centurion recognised from his own experience how Jesus could wield his authority without having to be physically present to cure the illness. <clears throat> This is a startling insight from the centurion, and Jesus commends him for his faith. Jesus notes that this Gentile, Roman centurion, had understood what many Jewish people did not. The Jews should have been the first to recognise Jesus' authority, as they had knowledge of the Old Testament scriptures, and so they knew about the Messiah. Yet Jesus notes that it is this Gentile, Roman centurion, who recognised Jesus' authority and had enough faith in him to trust that what he says will happen. And so Jesus cautions the crowd around him. Truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In other words, the Jewish people needed to start paying attention and recognise Jesus' authority and status as the Messiah they'd been waiting for, although fine, they would not have a place at God's feast. So next, Jesus travels to Peter's house, where they find his mother-in-law ill with a fever. Jesus places his, his hand on hers, and she is instantly and completely cured of her sickness. We know the healing was complete because she immediately gets up and begins to wait upon Jesus. While we don't know much about the interaction between Jesus and the mother-in-law, we do witness her immediate response. <clears throat> with the others we've looked at, we've seen how they approach Jesus with their request for healing. With the mother-in-law, we see how she responds after she has been healed. And this response is one of service. <clears throat> when we have experienced God's blessing, provision, healing or comfort, how do we respond? What is our immediate reaction? Do we just shrug it off and continue on with our day? Do we say a simple, thanks God, and then live as usual? Or do we respond with true gratitude and service, demonstrating our love for him by serving him and following his call upon our lives? It can be all too easy to get complacent about God's blessings. Because God is so incredibly generous, we get his blessings frequently throughout life. And so it can become routine or ordinary. And we forget just how amazing it is to receive from him. So let us learn from the mother-in-law to truly treasure all that God gives us and to serve him with all our hearts in response to his glorious generosity. So to recap, we've seen how Jesus exercised his authority in his teachings in the last few weeks. And now we see how he exercised his authority through his works of power. We've seen how the man with leprosy was lifted from his pit of self-loathing and isolation by being recognised, loved and healed by Christ. The centurion's confidence in Jesus was demonstrated by his trust that Jesus' word would be enough to cast out the illness. And the mother-in-law's response to Jesus' authority to cure fever was to serve him. So who do we most identify with at the moment? Are you needing to be seen and loved by Jesus because your self-esteem is at an all-time low? Are you wanting to demonstrate your faith in Jesus' authority like the centurion did? Or do you want to serve God faithfully like the mother-in-law? Maybe you relate to some of all of them. But however you're feeling, come to God. Recognise his authority, his love, his ability to do all things. And respond to him in worship, gratitude and service.